Good evening, Rice Station Christian Church. I'd like to welcome everyone out to this Wednesday evening Bible study, this webcast. And I want to encourage everyone to ask other people to come and, and watch our webcast as well so they can study the Word of God with us. Everyone go ahead and get out your Bibles or get out your Bible apps and go ahead and open those Bibles to Psalm 14. That's going to be the first place that we're going to go in the Scriptures this evening as we continue our study on Satan's tactics, the battle for our heart and soul. But as we begin, let us go before the Almighty God in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, we come before you, Lord, and we praise your holy name. Father, I thank you that even though we can't assemble yet in person on Wednesday, that we can have this webcast and, and we can get your word out to this world. And I pray, Father, that if there be anyone listening to this broadcast that does not know you as Lord and Savior, that they'll come to you, Lord, before it's everlasting too late. I pray for the healing, Father, the healing of this land. I pray for the nursing home here in uh, Estill County, and I pray for those in the hospital and all these people with coronavirus. I pray for our first responders, our EMTs, our firefighters, all the people that are on the, the front lines with this this coronavirus. And Father, I also thank you uh, for our veterans today, Lord, as today is the day that we uh, remember all, all of our veterans and how many of them have put their lives on the line to uh, help provide us with freedom. Father God, we thank you above all things for Jesus Christ and for Jesus laying down his life, coming to this earth and laying down his life on the cross of Calvary. Be with us, Lord, and guide us as we study your word. And we pray all this in Christ Jesus' name, and amen. What is ignorance? What is ignorance? Ignorance is not the inability to learn. As a matter of fact, by definition, ignorance is just a lack of knowledge in any certain field. Take, for instance, Joe is ignorant in the field of pharmacology. But Joe has some knowledge when it comes to the Bible. I may be ignorant in physics or in pharmacology, but I have some knowledge of the Word of God, and I try to grow in that knowledge every day. You know, knowledge is power in a lot of ways. Having knowledge of the Word of God, having knowledge of God and His Word, helps us fight against our enemy helps us fight against the evil one, Satan. For Satan, ignorance of God and ignorance of the Bible and even ignorance of Satan is a stronghold of destructive darkness. As we'll see today in our lesson called Satan Encourages Ignorance. Satan Encourages Ignorance. Let's first look at, how, look at some ways that Satan uses ignorance. Satan uses ignorance to try to get people not to believe in God and even not to believe in Satan. Really, in a lot of ways, people can become desensitized and not understand who God is and not understand who Satan is. I mean, think about it. When you watch television and it's a show in which they show someone uh, playing the character of Satan or be trying to be the character that's representative of God. Most most of the time, that's they do bad. You know, they they do the character very badly because what what will happen is this: they'll show this guy that's supposed to represent God, and he'll be this old man with a bald head and with a long beard, a white beard, and he'll have a staff in his hand and he's sitting on a cloud. Or they'll try to portray Satan as this red-skinned big-horned, long-tailed, pitchfork-carrying cartoon. Because of things like that, people can become desensitized to what and who God and Satan are. And because of that, so many people in this world are ignorant to who God and Satan are. When in fact, when we read the Bible and we understand when we read in the Bible, we understand who God is and who Satan is. In the Bible, we are told that God is all-powerful, that God is 
all-knowing, that God is always present, that God is the master of the universe, that God is in control of all things. As the song says, he's got the whole world in his hands. The Bible also lets us know that God loves mankind and that he loves us so, so much that he allowed his one and only son, Jesus Christ, to come to this world and to die on the cross to save us from our sins when we obey him. Now the Bible also informs us who Satan is. That Satan is this strong, evil demon who has these follower demons and they are on a journey, on a mission to try to deceive as many people as they can so that they can take as many souls with them to hell as they can. And the Bible also lets us know that Satan sometimes masquerades as an angel of light. Or in other words, Satan tries to make certain sinful things look good. And Satan uses ignorance, as I mentioned earlier, Satan uses ignorance to have people not believe in God and to not believe in Him. We're warned about this in Psalm 14, if you'd look there with me. In Psalm 14, in verse 1, verses 1 and 2 says, The fool says in his heart there is no God. They are corrupt, their deeds are vile, there is no one who does good. The Lord looks down from heaven on the sons of men to see if there are any who understand, any who seek God. So we see right there, the Bible says that the fool says in his heart there is no God. Satan wants people not to believe in him. Satan wants people not to believe in God so that they will wind up in hell. Now that's one way that Satan uses ignorance. Another way is Satan uses things like the theory of evolution, saying that man came from a monkey. I mean, do you hear how silly that sounds? Man came from a monkey? Uh, that, that's completely false. But Satan uses things like that theory of evolution and the Big Bang theory to say that uh, oh, Genesis chapter 1 and chapter 2 it is false. And people are even taught these things in school. This theory of evolution, this Big Bang theory. Now I'll tell you this, if there was a Big Bang and there wasn't, if there was a Big Bang, then someone had to create the objects that hit together to make that Big Bang, right? Someone had to create the space in which that took place in, right? And who would that be? Well, of course, it would have been the Almighty God. But the Bible lets us know that that's not how things came about. That instead, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, Satan also uses false belief systems to try to get people to believe false doctrines. Why does Satan stress stuff like that, like the theory of evolution, like the Big Bang Theory, and these false doctrines that are out in this world? Because Satan wants people to live in ignorance of the absolute truth of the Word of God. So what Satan does is he tries to keep the blind blind. Satan tries to keep the blind living in the darkness. He tries to keep people wearing what I like to call spiritual blinders where they're only looking in this one direction instead of taking those blinders off and looking into the Word of God. Let's look at a verse about Satan getting people to wear spiritual blinders. And it's in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, if you'd turn there with me. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and we'll read verses 3 through 4. And there the Apostle Paul writes, And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. The God, lowercase g, the God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers. And so they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. So the words here, God of this age, refers to Satan. He's out there to keep these blinders on people. And Jesus actually teaches us about this 
during his three-year earthly ministry. Turn with me now over to Mark chapter 8. And we'll read a little bit about what Jesus teaches us about people who are spiritually blind. Blind to the truth. And really blind to the truth because they don't get into the Word of God. Mark 8. And let's read verses 22 through 25. And it says, They came to Bethsaida, and some people brought a blind man who begged Jesus to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand and led him outside the village. When he had spit on the man's eyes and put his hands on them, Jesus asked, Do you see anything? He looked up and said, I see people. They look like trees walking around. Once more, Jesus put his hands on the man's eyes. Then his eyes were opened, his sight was restored, and he saw everything clearly. Now notice that Jesus touched this man had to do two different things. Jesus did two different things to heal this man. He had to touch this man twice. Now, let me ask you this. Could Jesus have healed this man if he just touched him one time? Could Jesus have healed this man if he just touched him one time? Yes, absolutely. He's Jesus, a part of the all-powerful, almighty God. But you see, there's a reason that this blind man had a two-part healing. And our lesson book gives us a little commentary on that. So if you would, get out your lesson book, if you have one, and turn with me to page 37. Page 37 at the bottom. And let's read some commentary on this blind man that was healed by two touches. And at the bottom there, it says, He used blindness as a symbol to teach them about their lack of understanding and faith. He partially healed a blind man and later completely healed him, demonstrating how the apostles were partially blind and needed to become fully able to see. Immediately following this, Jesus began to teach the disciples only that to have Peter blinded by his misunderstanding to be called Satan by Jesus in Mark 8.31. It, was it wasn't that Peter was consciously working to defeat our Lord's mission. Rather, it was Peter's blind passion and love for Jesus that Satan was using to work through him. Jesus recognized this and harshly rebuked him. So we can see that Jesus healed this man with this two-part, two-touch healing to show the apostles, to show us today that some people, well, they wear those spiritual blinders as they go through this life and they focus on somebody's theory. And some people do that and they kind of look out just a little bit. But Jesus is saying you need to take off the spiritual blinders and you need to look into the truth to understand what the truth is. So this brings us to a question. And this is a very important question, probably the most important question that we'll answer throughout this lesson. And that question is this. What are ways we can combat Satan's use of ignorance? What are some ways we could say to take off the spiritual blinders and to see what we need to see. Well, our greatest weapon against the ignorance in this world and the ignorance that Satan promotes is the truth, the absolute truth. You see, in Ephesians chapter 6, we read about the full armor of God that we Christians wear as we stand against the devil's schemes. Remember there we talk about how we wear the helmet of salvation. We have the shield of faith. We have the breastplate of righteousness. We have our sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. We have our feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. We pray, but something else that's mentioned there is to have the belt of truth wrapped around our waist. I mean, that's how we use a belt, right? We wrap it around us. So why does he mention the belt of truth? Because 
We need to live our lives with truth, the truth of the Word of God surrounding us all the time. I mean, we have enough of the world's ignorance and sinfulness coming into our minds all the time, so we need to surround ourselves with the truth. You know, one thing that, that I like to do with that is I like to have like the little Bible verses throughout my home you know, hanging on the wall or pillows that have Bible verses on them because, you know, the word is truth. As we'll see in a minute in John 17, 17, when Jesus is praying, he says God's word is truth. So we surround ourselves with truth when we have ourselves surrounded with the word of God. You see, God told his people in the Old Testament to surround themselves, to surround their lives with truth. Let's look back there, if you would. Turn with me to Deuteronomy chapter 6. Deuteronomy chapter 6. We were over in chapter 8 Sunday morning. We'll go back to chapter 6. And we'll read verses 4 through 9. And remember, we're talking about surrounding ourselves with truth. And here's what it says. Hear, O Israel... The Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. These commands I give you today and are to be upon your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home, when you walk along the road and when you lie down and when you get up. So what he's saying there is make sure your children's lives are are surrounded by the truth and that you're teaching your children the truth of the Word of God. And you need to be doing it all the time. Why? Because there's all this evil that's going to be coming into their minds. So surround them with words of truth. Verse 8 says, Tie them as symbols around your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on your door frames of your house and on your gates. Again, surround your life with truth. A way that, that we can do that, as I mentioned, you can have, of course, scriptures posted in your house. You can have um, the radio in the car turned to a Christian station or playing Christian music and, and to study the Word of God. We, as God's people today and people who follow God in the Old Testament, should surround their lives with truth, right? They, they were told to, and we are to as well. We surround our lives with truth by listening to doctrinally sound sermons. Now, there's a lot of sermons and lessons out here in the world that teachers teach and preachers preach that are full of false doctrine. We need to surround ourselves with doctrine, doctrinally sound, rock-solid doctrine, truths. We need to have a daily devotional time. We need to study the Word of God, basically staying in the Word all the time. So I ask you, when was the last time you picked up your Bible? It's Wednesday. We had church Sunday. I hope Sunday wasn't the last time you looked into the Word of God. If you have, if that's been you, then it's time to make a change, right? Because the word is truth. As I said, John 17, 17, Jesus was praying to the Father. And there we read that it says that Jesus said to the Father, Sanctify them by truth. Your word is truth. God's word is truth. And we must stay in the word to, com to combat Satan's use of ignorance. Now something else is this. We must mature in our spiritual walk. We must mature in our spiritual walk. You see, basic knowledge of the Word of God isn't enough. We should grow. We should grow in the Lord. You know, Brother Andrew spoke about that in his lesson uh, that he did this week. That we don't just need to feed on that spiritual milk all the time that we need to get to that spiritual stake. And, and, and that's so true. We don't need to just focus on the elementary teachings. We need to absorb those elementary teachings and go over them all the time, but we need to move on to more deep subjects. We need to grow and mature. And when we grow and mature, we can better combat Satan. Let's look at a couple scriptures on that. 
Let's go over to 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 2 says, Like newborn babies, crave pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. It doesn't say stay on the milk. You've got to crave it. You've got to hunger for it. But then you've got to grow up. As a matter of fact, flip on over to 2 Peter chapter 3. And I love this verse. 2 Peter chapter 3. And go to verse 18, the very last scripture in this book. And there Peter says, But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory both now and forever. Amen. You see, we Christians were not saved to remain infants in Christ. We were not saved just to remain on the spiritual milk. We were saved to grow. Think about it like this. Imagine that, that you have a child. Even if you don't have a child, just imagine with me for a moment. You have a child, and the child's around eight years old. The child's going to school, but you suddenly start noticing that this child is not getting as tall as the other kids. This child is not gaining weight and getting physically stronger. This child is not maturing mentally. As a matter of fact, the other classmates are maturing so much faster. And it just seems that there's something wrong with the child. So what do you do? Well, you take the child to a physician, and the physician will examine the child, take blood work, do tests, to find out if there's a reason that the child is not growing. And you're greatly concerned about that, right? Well, I tell you what, if you're not growing and you're not maturing in the Lord, then you need to go to the great physician. And you need to go to his word and feed on it. And when you do, that's the remedy. When you go to the word and you pray to God to help you study the word, you pray to God to have the Holy Spirit guide you as you study the word. And as you do that, and the more you do that, the more you will grow and the more you will flourish because we Christians are not saved to remain infants in Christ. We're, sta we're saved to grow and mature until we make it to the glory land of heaven. If you're not growing in the Lord, then you're not spending much time in the, Lord, in the Word, and we should. And when we do, it makes Satan's attacks much more able to, to be handled. So one of Satan's tactics is to spread ignorance throughout the world. And in order to combat that ignorance, we need to be people of the truth, people who live in the truth, people who surround ourselves in the truth, people who speak the truth of the Word of God. By the way, did you know that Jesus is the truth? Jesus, His the, the one and only Son of God who left heaven to come to this earth to show us the way He is truth. The one who went to the cross and was buried and rose again, He is truth. Jesus said right before He went to the cross, after He had the, the, the Last Supper, the Lord's Supper with His disciples, He was speaking to them, preparing them for His departure, and He says to them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through and by me. So lost soul or strayed soul, do you want to start living a life in the truth? Do you want to have all your sins washed away? Do you want to be in that glory land of heaven one day, bowing before the Almighty God, serving Him all throughout eternity, resting from all the troubles of this life? Well, if you do, you have to obey the truth. You have to obey Jesus by living out God's plan of salvation. That plan that I go over during each service, that we must hear the Word of God, that we must believe the Word of God, that we must repent of our sins, that we must confess that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, that we must be baptized into Christ 
bearing our old person of sin, bearing our old self and raising from the watery grave of baptism is a new person in Christ Jesus with all of our sins washed away by the blood of the Lamb. And then we must live faithfully to the end. I want to encourage you, lost soul or strayed soul, if you have a decision to make, don't delay. Don't put it off. Eternity is too long to be wrong. Eternity is too long to be in the wrong, have the wrong relationship with the Lord. You need to be in this deep, committed relationship with the Lord. You need to obey His plan of salvation because without the Lord, you won't make it to heaven. Well, I hope we all stay prepared to make it to heaven. And I hope we all keep our full armor of God on and stay in the word of truth and fight hard against Satan so that we can one day make it to that glory land. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, Almighty God, we come before you, Lord, and we praise your name. We know that we live in a world where there's so much ignorance out here when it comes to your word because some people don't get into it, Father. And I pray that we do our best, Lord, to spread your word so that people will know the truth. I pray that we do our best to stay in your word of truth so that we can grow spiritually, myself included, Father. I pray that you just, just bless us, Father, and encourage us as your servants. Please forgive us of our failings. I'll uplift every name of every person that's on the prayer list, Father, and I cast them into your hands and pray for their healing. Father God, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. And we pray all this in Christ Jesus' name, and amen.